Hello everybody and welcome back to the very final episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. As you will have saw in the last episode we are Premier League champions but it's all to play for today as we go into the Champions League final against Inter Milan. So the season has been an absolutely fantastic one no matter what happens today but this is where our Sheffield United journey ends. As you can see Premier League winners, final of the Champions League, European Super Cup winners. We didn't do so well in the domestic cups, finishing in the semi-finals, uh, getting knocked out by Liverpool in the FA Cup, and getting knocked out the fourth round by in the League Cup. But that's not too big of a concern. What is a concern today is the Champions League final, and we're going to jump straight into this and hopefully play our strongest side we have. So this is how we're going to start. Pickford and goal, Bella Kotchap, Onjean. Is it going to be Tilo Keller? I think it has to be. Patella isn't hasn't had the greatest five games, but I believe he is the better central defender, so he is going to get the start over Tilo Kerra. Dodo and Pellegrini will be as our wing backs as they always are. They've been absolutely phenomenal this season, the pair of them. Ronaldo Sanchez and Mariba have really cemented themselves as the key figures in the centre of midfield, as Donny Olmo, Danny Olmo has been pushed higher up to replace Jean Pierre. Erling Haaland and Sebastiano Esposito will start up top Champions League final time five seasons in with Sheffield United we are and this is far earlier than I could ever have anticipated we weren't even meant to be in the Champions League this season we only got there due to the Europa League win but we come up against a very very strong looking Inter Milan side Romelu Lukaku up top obviously a fantastic striker and under FM he's always brilliant his physicals are to die for and he's a very good striker. He hasn't actually played very well at all for Inter Milan this season. Only two goals and 25 starts in Syria. But that doesn't mean he isn't going to be phenomenal. They've got Andrea Bellotti up front. 14 goals and 26 games in Syria. And again, just another brilliant striker. How much did they pay for him? 48 million from Torino four seasons ago. That's a very, very good sign. And Nicolo Barella, one of the best midfielders on the game. World class. Absolutely fantastic season for him for Inter Milan. Valued at 58 million. He is going to be key for them. They've signed Christian Eriksen. Um, he was signed on a free transfer from Spurs. And even at 32 years old, he still looks like a phenomenal talent. He reminds me of Danny Olmo in a lot of ways. Uh, then they've got Danilo Pereira, 32-year-old from Porto. I'm not sure when they signed him. This season for £10.5 million. Pounds, a very, very good. They've got a very experienced side is what I'm noticing. Rogilion, very, very good left wing back. I was being interested in him a lot of times. But he's found himself at Inter Milan going on free transfer from Real Madrid. And he's been a mainstay in their side ever since. Danny Carvajal, 32 years old, right wing back. £61 million pounds they've paid Real Madrid for him. And he's, again, been another one who's been in their side ever since. Elvedi their first centre back maybe a weak link maybe a weak link um, he is still a very talented centre back and player all across the back line valued at 48 million pounds assigned him from Mönchengladbach for 28 and a half three years ago Lissandro Martinez 26 years old very very good centre back on FM signed from uh, Chelsea after briefly uh, starting at Ajax then going to Chelsea for 50, uh, 56 million pounds to Inter Milan Perez a very good I think he's pretty much a world class centre back Signed from Atletico Madrid for £55 million. And finally, Nubel, a German goalkeeper. Not really amazing. Um, Handanovic was maybe retired or just moved on. But um, they've got a very fantastic squad. And I think one that compares to ours very favourably, maybe. Um, a lot of experience in there. Whereas our boys are a lot younger. And that might end up being the key difference today. But hopefully not. They've got a strong bench as well, just having a quick glance at that. The likes of Catron, Semedo, uh, João Pedro, I know is a very talented striker. Um, who else have they got? Joachim Anderson, I'm not sure why he isn't starting over Elvedi. Maybe he's a little bit weaker. Uh, but, but we've got Lincoln. I haven't had Lincoln on this year's game. I'm not sure how good he is, but he still looks fantastic. So they've got options coming off the bench. It's going to be a key battle, I think, is going to be this midfield area with Barella. I think they've got a better midfielder than any of ours. But we're going to have to hope Ronaldo Sanchez and Mariba can hold their own. Might be an option to maybe drop Daniel Olmo back into the centre of midfield um, in the second half. Maybe if things aren't necessarily going our way. Well that's enough for the pre-game chit-chat. Let's get the kick off. 
Just before we kick off properly into Milan, I just wanted to see how they had actually done in the league and they finished in fourth place, which isn't actually that great. Um, so they didn't have the best season domestically. They still made the Champions League, obviously, but um, they weren't the best side in Italy. So we are the best side in England. Well, this season anyway. I'm not sure if this is actually a highlight. It is absolutely a highlight. Iliax Mariba, 40 seconds in, gets his eighth goal of the season from the edge of the box, and we go 1-0 up against Inter Milan inside the first minute. That is absolutely perfect. Perfect player. Mariba to Pellegrini, linking up on that left-hand side, and then he just goes for it, and there's no chance for the keeper. And within a minute, we are 1-0 up in the Champions League final. We're going to go to a positive team mentality. Um, go straight off that attack. And just to, I can see they're already on the counter. So if we uh, attack an all game, it might end up uh, exposing some of our issues in defence. But, perfect start. The first half's just ticking away. Oh, hey, we'll go half an hour in. We'll get our second highlight. And it looks like it's going to be us again on the attack as Pellegrini whips it in. It's cleared by Regilion, but Renato Sanchez keeps the ball alive. Dodo's in the box. He goes for goal. <laughs> Dodo gets in them opportunities all the time. And unfortunately, he doesn't have the greatest finishing. And that is the end of the first half. Inter Milan nil, Sheffield United 1. Iliax Mareba getting the only goal in the game so far. The game's been pretty dead, to be honest with you, in this first half. But with us being 1-0 up, we don't care. Let's kick off for the second. As you can see, keeping an eye on the Inter formation, they have removed... The cautious, so they've went to a balanced team mentality. So they are starting to ramp up in terms of how much they are going to come forward. Uh, positive seems to be killing this game for us. Renato Sanchez has picked up a knock though, which isn't great. We'll get Marcus Antonio in for him, and we'll switch Mariba and Mar Antonio around. Uh, I think Mariba's more well-rounded, and we'll be able to handle the box-to-box -box midfielder role a little bit better. We're not going to make any more changes. This is our strongest eleven, obviously, apart from Sanchez coming off. Um, and as this is the last game of the season, I am no interest in resting any legs. As there is a first highlight of the second half, 80 minutes in. Erling Haaland goes for goal and hits the post. Come on, boys. Just hold on now. For another throw in. This time, again for us, Dodo on the right-hand side finds Erling Haaland. He whips the ball in. Pellegrini's there. Esposito. Somebody. Oh, I think that was probably the highlight. That was close. Oh, no. Three minutes to go. It looks like Inter Milan have their first... Attack and highlight of... Oh, please be offside. Please be offside. Coutron, is that offside? Goal of... It's been offside. Right. T team instructions. Dribble less. Uh, be more disciplined. We're not working the ball into the box anymore. We are killing this game. We are not... We are just not going to give them the time or the energy to... Very defensive for the final few minutes. Three minutes to go. Two... That's... The easiest Champions League final I think I have ever had on any football manager whatsoever. Inter Milan nil, Sheffield United won. I will take that to the bank all day. Sheffield United, Premier League champions, Champions League champions. Absolutely unbelievable. We have achieved it all with Sheffield United. Even the Europa League. It's usually a thing that ends up getting passed by as you progress up the league. Um, but we've managed to do it. That... That game has just left me absolutely battled. Mariba getting the first goal. And that was it, basically. After that first goal, it was just game over. As we'll flick through some of the messages that come in after a medal for Champions Cup wins. There you are. Sheffield United fans worship Williams. Well, I'm about to resign. So hopefully they don't worship me too much. Um, Sheffield, you know, Sheffield United board delighted with Champions Cup win. Arsenal won it last season. Paris Saint-Germain before that. English domination. In the past six Champions Leagues. But we've got our name etched on that trophy now. Mareba, thank you very much my friend. We signed you for a very cheap deal from Barcelona. 225k. And he has proved to be worth every single penalty. And there's the Champions League in review. We are the biggest overachievers. Paris Saint-Germain not doing very well. Knocked out in the first knockout round. Um, our Champions League run was pretty fortunate. If we are just to take a quick glance back. At what actually happened during the Champions League. Uh, we drew in the group with Barcelona and ended up finishing second, narrowly finishing second. And then Monch and Glad back in the first knockout round. We could have been knocked out there quite easily, getting through on away goals. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen was a difficult tie. We ended up going into the second leg, needing the 2 0 win to go through. Barcelona in the semis was actually easier than any of the others. 1 1 away from home, 2 0 at home, and then 1 0 in the final against Inter Milan. This squad has proved itself to be absolutely 
fantastic. We'll take a look. We'll take a quick look through at all the players. John Pickford, new signing for the season. 25, 23 and a half million pounds from Everton. And I think he's been one of the main difference makers. He's only conceded five goals in the Champions League all campaign. 35 goals conceded in 38 games in the Premier League. He has been a revelation in England's number one, 70 caps, 30 years old. If Sheffield United can keep a hold of him once I leave, they've got a very capable goalkeeper for at least four to five years. Dean Henderson was signed in January. You've never seen him. He's played one game in their FA Cup. So we'll just breeze past that. David Batella has found himself being one of our first names on the team sheet at centre-back. We signed him for £20 million at the beginning of last season. And whilst initially he wasn't necessarily first choice, he found himself getting there just through his natural development. A very talented centre-half. And all of these players were signed for relatively cheap and, and I had, I envision the AI selling them for quite a high amount. David and David. Bella Kochap was signed for £9.25 million from Borsham. He has developed a two-hour best centre-back according to our system manager. And he's been a mainstay in the side ever since. Same with Dodo. We signed him for £20 million, £20.5 million from Shakhtar. I think right wing-backs is a place where on Football Manager you don't necessarily get the top talent because not many players can play right wing back it's a pretty niche position but Dodo has definitely found himself to be unbelievable 14 goals in 58 games 15 assists from right wing back is nothing to be sneezed at George Baldock our old true faithful he was at the club when we joined and he for three seasons he was absolutely irreplaceable he done very very well and as the years have gone on he's obviously dropped back to a more supporting role but he's still, if you're starting this year with Sheffield United, he is a very capable right wing back. Uh, Reese James we signed and unfortunately didn't get too much game time for us due to his injury. He did actually get 12 games, 1 start, 11 substitute appearances, but uh, didn't really get going for us. Jerome Onjin, we've had our issues with, particularly in terms of his contract and stuff like that, but we signed him for £9.25 million for Sal from Salzburg and he's been absolutely fantastic ever since. Tilo Kera, another one, one of our very first signings, I believe, five and a half million pounds from Paris Saint-Germain and a mainstay at centre-back. Um, he, he's been one who's kicked up a fuss every now and then as well, but he's not been too bad. Josh Tymon signed in January, not too much game time for him, purely down to Luca Pellegrini's form, and we'll go to Luca Pellegrini now. 14 goals and 6 assists in 52 games um, from left wing-back. Again, not necessarily the best talent you're ever going to see, but a very niche ability at that left wing back role. Marcus Antonio joined us from Shakhtar alongside Dodo. I think he was £17.5 million pounds, um, last season. And he did well when he got game time. But he found himself being third or fourth choice centre midfielder. As the arrival and emergence of Iliax Mariba. Um, he's just unbelievable. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure every save I have seen. He has left Barcelona for an incredibly cheap fee. So if you're ever playing a football manager save. Get him shortlisted and he will become available at some point. 225k we signed him for. Um, he wasn't necessarily first starter in these first season. But this season he has found himself becoming a mainstay in the side. Renato Sanchez was a surprising one. I thought he would have been the one who we ended up dropping to third or fourth choice central midfielder. But he's found himself being our first choice. £24.5 million from Lille. Last season found his game time a little bit more limited. But this season he's been fantastic. And well worth every penny. Jean-Pierre is someone who's dropped off a little bit this season, but he was one of our first signings as well, £23.5 million. Um, and then ever since then, the first three seasons, he was absolutely fantastic. 11 goals, 11 goals, 10 goals. But this season, Danny Olmo has been pushed further forward and Jean-Pierre had to make way. Danny Olmo, what can we say about Danny Olmo? If you're starting to save on this database before the January transfer update comes, sign him. Just sign him. Uh, retrain him as a central midfielder if you need to but he obviously his natural position is attacker midfield six goals and 22 assists in 37 games maybe half of which were from central midfield you kind of complain about that he's absolutely fantastic we signed him for 24 and a half million pounds and he's now worth 70 odd so Wayne Knowles Wayne Wayne Knowles a regen not many regens in this uh, Sheffield United side which does surprise me a little bit I'm usually someone who, as soon as the regen start appearing, I'm just going for them. Um, but I don't think they develop quite as fast on Football Manager 20 as they have on previous editions. He got himself 10 goals and 3 assists in the Premier League from 16 starts and 14 substitute appearances, which is nothing to sneeze at for a young Englishman. 
Whether he makes it and becomes a top quality striker without me pushing it, I don't really know, but we'll have to wait and see. I will be doing some episodes where we look into the future with um, Sheffield United. We'll, um, we'll sign him for an incredibly cheap fee, 975k. And we will remember last season, he was our hero in the Europa League. And six goals in 10 um, non-competitive games is... Oh, wait, we'll ignore that. Two goals in four starts in the Premier League and the FA Cup. He's done his bit. He definitely has and well worth 775k. Florian Monzon, you'll never have seen him. We'll sign him just to play it back up. Erling Haaland, we all know him in real life and went to Borussia Dortmund, so you're not going to be able to sign him anymore. But if you can, 23 goals in 32 Premier League starts. He is one of them strikers who goes through um, spells where he's lethal and spells where the goals dry up. But just look at his attributes. A powerful striker. Still got one start to go according to my assistant manager. And he's a very capable forward. And the same seems to be said with Sebastiano Esposito. Different strikers. Very different strikers. But um, they bounce off each other in terms of the dips in form. Um, four star current, five star potential academy assistant, 13 goals and 22 starts. Had a bit of an injury hit season this season, um, which is why Wayne Knowles ended up getting so much game time. But a sign in at 20 million pounds from Inter Milan was absolutely fantastic business. And looking at Erling Haaland as well was 25 million from Red Bull, Salz uh, Red Bull Salzburg. So that is the squad. And now all that's left to do is see how we've compared to Fergie. So. First season, I've got his stats up. What did he do in his first, very first season? So in his first season, he actually beat us, taking over Manchester United. He finished in 11th position with Man United, while we finished in 13th. He did not win the FA Cup, did not win the League Cup, so everything is even there. He's got one, one up on us in his first season. In his second season, he finishes in the top two. So us finishing second, uh, us finishing sixth, sorry, and not second, is not ideal. They got knocked out their FA Cup fifth round and the League Cup fifth round, so no trophies won for him there either. The third round as well, we start to overtake the third year even. He finished 11th in the league in his third season, while we finished sixth once again, qualifying for European competition. He got knocked out their FA Cup sixth round and the League Cup third round, so no domestic titles for him there. In terms of the next season, they finished 13th while we finished fifth. And I thought we were behind the pace at this point. I thought we should be getting Champions League football at this point. But we did win the European Cup. We won the league, uh, Europa League and the FA Cup. He won the FA Cup but finished 13th in the Premier League. So evenly matched again but Europa League definitely comes up in our favour. And in the fifth and final season we won the Premier League. We won the Champions League. We won the European Super Cup. What did Fergie do? He finished 6th in the league. Got knocked out the FA Cup 5th round. League Cup finalists. And he won the European Cup Winners' Cup. So, I think on reflection, we've beat Fergie. We're just better managers, you know? Maybe the greatest manager of all time. We've done better with Sheffield United on Football Manager. Makes it a little bit easier. But anyway, I think that's going to wrap up the series. If you have enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like. If you're interested in seeing five years into the future, then ten years into the future with Sheffield United as to how they adapt without me running the club, please get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.